Hey everyone, it's Colin, how's it going? PlayStation Now is a service that lets you stream games over the internet. And some have said that ultimately that sort of platform is the way that all games will end up getting played. But Sony's made some moves lately that's limited the functionality of it. And it's got me wondering just what's going on? As I'm filming this, PlayStation Now has been around for a couple of years, and it made a little bit of a splash when it first came out. It is an interesting concept in that instead of having the game actually on your console, you know, in your home, you're basically playing the game on a server over the internet. And as you would expect, you've got a pretty wide variety of games that you can play and just pick on demand. It's subscription-based, so you pay a certain amount of money per month, and you get access to all the games, and you can play as much as you want. And over time, it ended up gathering quite a bit of support from different types of hardware. Not only could you play games on, like, a regular PlayStation 4, but they added support for the PS3, the PlayStation Vita, and most interestingly, they added support directly from some flat panel televisions. And not just Sony televisions, Samsung got into the game as well. So there was a little bit of kind of open-minded thinking going on there in that it wasn't just another way for Sony to sell video game consoles, but it was kind of a shift towards a new model of actually delivering games and gaming content. The pricing, pretty average. It, it seems to kind of match up with what most people would pay for something like a Netflix subscription. And Netflix is actually kind of a very similar example here in that you pay per month that in the US, it's about 10 bucks a month, and you've got a catalog of games that you can pick from, and Sony advertises something like 450 games. Now, kind of like Netflix doesn't necessarily always get the latest movies right away in its catalog. You sometimes have to wait a little bit. Sony isn't putting the latest games out on PlayStation now either. It's actually all limited to PS3 era games, which is a curious move, but not entirely unexplained in its own right. But there have been some interesting things afoot lately um, that make me really kind of wonder the future of the platform. From a bean counter, kind of accounting, uh, marketing, corporate perspective, game streaming makes a ton of sense, right? Instead of having the weird seasonal ups and downs of selling consoles and selling games, um, you know, some months are going to be better than others and that sort of thing, you've got people on a subscription model and they sell year-long subscriptions for about a hundred bucks so that it kind of evens out the cash flow. And we've talked about this before. Companies just really like that. The, the, the bean counters really like having relatively consistent cash flow on a month-to-month -month basis. It also is interesting in that it, it can offer companies a better kind of return on investment. Um, in that they, they're able to recycle hardware, I guess you could say. Um, you get better economies of scale, I suppose is maybe a better way to put it. Now, in Sony's case, they're kind of double dipping in that the primary way of playing on PS Now is through a PlayStation console. So they've got you not only on a hardware purchase, but they're also going to get you on this subscription as well. So they're, they're kind of hitting you up in, in multiple ways. But where it got interesting was that TV part of it, that they not only extended PlayStation Now support to some of their own TVs, but even the competitors' TVs. You know, Samsung got in on the game. And it's really as simple as you hook the TV up to internet access and you pair a DualShock controller and you can play PlayStation Now games. You don't need a full console. So there's a lot of value to be added there. And it's gotten people saying, well, this is kind of the future of gaming, just like Netflix has in many ways been said to be the future of movies and television. 
where nobody's really going out and buying the physical media as much anymore. They'd rather just have it streaming. You know, it's a click of a button away and you've got this wide variety. You can watch whatever you want to watch whenever you want it. You can binge watch an entire series of a TV show all in one shot if you want to do so. Um, it just gives you tons and tons of flexibility. And the companies that run that platform still make a decent amount of money, especially since they don't have that physical aspect to worry about. They don't have the cost of, of preparing and printing discs and that sort of thing. As soon as an episode or a movie is done, they just take the file and upload it and then, you know, make money. And it, those, those aspects really have parallels with gaming, with PS Now. It makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, you just put a game out on PS Now and it's there and it's available and people can play as much or as little of it as they want. You don't have to worry about physical distribution. You don't have to worry about reduction of profit margins because, you know, if, if a software publisher sells a game to be sold at retail, you know, a game that goes for 60 bucks in a store, the software publisher isn't making 60 bucks. You know, the store selling it's going to have a cut too. So in some ways it can help improve their margins. Um, it just, it, it, from a, a, a corporate kind of business standpoint, doing streaming games really is kind of the future. But recently, Sony scaled back on PlayStation Now. They, they came out with a press release not too long ago from when I'm filming this saying that there are end dates now for when they're going to pull support for playing PS Now from the PS3, from the Vita, but also from all those TVs, which is interesting. Un I, I could understand pulling support from the PS3 and the Vita because those are older platforms that Sony just wants to be done with. And we've talked about kind of the so-called death of the PlayStation Vita, how you can't really buy the hardware new, at least in the US anymore. The PS3, I think everyone has also kind of come to terms that, you know, that, that console has reached its end of life. And now it's just in that, you know, extended legacy support kind of phase. We're not going to see much new software for the PS3 coming out and probably not a ton for the Vita either. But adding the TVs to that list was really curious. And I don't remember the exact quote, but it's basically been said that Sony has expressed that it really wants to focus PlayStation Now on the PS4 and PC platforms. So you're gonna be able to play PlayStation Now games from a PC. In some ways you could see that as being a little bit of a competitor to Xbox games with Microsoft doing the whole universal Windows platform concept where you can have a game that runs either on your Xbox or on a Windows PC and you can go back and forth and it's the same software and they don't have to write it. It's not getting ported between the two, anything like that. Some could say in, in some ways, you know, this is a nod by Sony towards that. But my gut tells me that it's really kind of a, a way for them to scale back the service. We haven't heard a whole ton of news about PS Now. And to be honest, it doesn't really feel like it's ever set the world on fire. I don't know anyone personally who uses it. And Sony hasn't released any sort of numbers as to how many subscribers there are. If I were into betting, I would be willing to bet that there are far fewer PS Now subscribers than there are PlayStation Plus. And there are a decent number of PS Plus subscribers, but not a, a huge number. It's, it's clear that not everyone who owns a PlayStation has PS Plus. So it's kind of gotten me wondering, you know, just what the future of that platform is and why Sony may be pulling back on it. In some ways, um, I'd be willing to think that it could be due to lack of interest. Well, why would there be lack of interest? The most obvious one is the game selection. It is all PlayStation 3 titles. And I'm not saying that PS3 titles are bad, but when you look at it from a value perspective, you know, PS3 titles, the, the used prices on those games are coming down. And if you're paying 10 bucks a month, for a streaming game service, well, a lot of PS3 titles can be had used for 10 bucks. So if you just buy one game every month, you know, albeit used, well, you're still paying the same amount of money. And the difference is you get to keep that game, you know, no matter what, versus 
with PS Now, if you stop paying the money, you don't get to play those games anymore. I think the other interest thing may just be, you know, people want newer games on that platform. I, I, I'm a little bit surprised, but not really, that Sony didn't include PS4 games in there. And it's probably a nod or concessions to the software publishers that this was really sold to them more as a way to try to extract more profit off of these older titles than it was just an alternate way for them to distribute their newer games. Um, I think software publishers are probably still a bit more comfortable with the idea of selling games as you know one-time purchase downloads and, and retail just because they've got a history of numbers to go back to. You know, the games in some ways are kind of formulaic and that they know if they come out with a new first person shooter for X platform, they're gonna probably sell so many copies within the first month or so. And, you know, maybe they're a little concerned about what that uptake and actual revenue numbers would look like if they were to just release that game on streaming instead. So, you know, there are definitely some, some kind of corporate money accounting kind of shenanigans going on. And it's in some ways really unfortunate when those kind of uh, run counter to just what people want to do with their hardware, the way they want to play games, the way they want to interact with the stuff that they buy. You know, the corporate interests always kind of end up taking center stage instead of, you know, just the notion of, well, you know, we just want to put a game out there and, and let people enjoy it, um, you know, and, and, and do it just for the love of, of making games and enjoying them. You know, sometimes it seems like the people involved in money get a little too involved, which I think is potentially an argument you could have about really any industry. But PS Now, you know, in so many ways, it really does kind of herald the future. And other than that whole, you know, the gaming selection thing, I think the price is pretty good. But maybe there's a little bit of worry in a couple of other regards that aren't necessarily directly tied to the service. I mentioned earlier on that PS Now, in some ways, is kind of a mirror of the way Netflix works. Well, I know a problem that a lot of people have with Netflix is that it's not a consistent list of content that they have available. You know, it's not like Netflix has only ever added stuff to the catalog. Stuff gets removed too as contracts expire and, you know, all the legal mumbo jumbo kind of stuff that happens. So I think there may be some worry on the part of gamers that the same thing might happen to them. You know, when you... When you watch a TV series, most people really only kind of watch it once. You know, you watch a movie, you're only going to watch it once, maybe twice. And there's not a huge time investment in that. You know, a movie's a couple hours long. I've, I've heard plenty of stories of people who have started to watch a TV series and then Netflix decides to pull it or they're forced to pull it and you get kind of caught, you know, out in the cold like that and you don't get to finish it. But my gut tells me that there's more of a time investment in playing games than there is in consuming something like movies or a TV series. Of course, there are some that, you know, that are the exception and not the rule. But I, I know if I were to get into a service like PS Now, that would be something that I would worry about is, you know, I'd get halfway into a game that takes you know, dozens if not hundreds of hours to complete and halfway through it gets pulled on me. And the only thing you can do in that point is to go out and maybe buy a copy of that game, but you've probably lost your progress, you know, in the process of doing so. So then you start all over again and then you get demotivated and you know what, screw it, I don't want to finish that game. And it ends up being a big turnoff. The other thing that I kind of think maybe an up and coming issue. And we've talked about this in a previous podcast um, about net neutrality, and that is the whole data cap thing. Streaming video takes up a lot of data. And if you're doing a service like PS Now, 
that's streaming video. I mean, what you send up to the cloud, the platform that all the games run on, is not a whole lot of data. But they're basically sending you real-time streaming video all the way back. And if you play games for a few hours every night, it's possible you could run into data cap type of, of issues. And of course, not every country is impacted by that. Some countries have more competition between ISPs and data caps don't exist and all of that. But at least here in the US, you know, when I look at streaming services, that's now something that I have to take into mind is, you know, how much data is this actually gonna use? Am I better off just going and buying a copy of the game to play locally because then I know at least I won't get hit with this random bill from my ISP that's way more than what it normally is. I do think that, you know, as time goes on, we will eventually get all these things sorted out. And there definitely is economies of scale. And for a lot of casual gamers, a service like PS Now makes a lot of sense, uh, at least from a financial perspective. 10 bucks a month, you can play all the games that you want, at least all the ones that are available. That's a pretty good value proposition, especially if they get into adding new or newer games to the mix. But, you know, maybe right now, the, the, the limitations that PS Now is, is facing is really more, not so much an overarching concern about the technology in general, but more just the specific execution that Sony had with it. In time, I think it will get better. And I do not think that Sony is gonna be the only company that will try this sort of thing. Um, I do think that potentially Microsoft may get into it and Nintendo may do that as well. I mean, Nintendo's already dipping its toes in the water um, with offering like a vintage game uh, as part of its online service that's going to be spinning up with Nintendo Switch coming out. I think they, you know, they may dip their toes in that water as well. We'll see where it goes. I don't think this is going to be the last we'll hear about it. And to be honest, I don't think this is the last we're going to hear about PlayStation now. I, you know, it, it may kind of fade out, but I don't think it's going to be gone forever. But anyway, I'm curious as to your thoughts. Have you tried out that service? What do you think? Is it worth the money? Is it too much money for too little return? Do you wish they would expand it? I'm just curious as to your thoughts, so be sure to leave those down in the comments below. Of course, I'm always taking suggestions for future podcast topics and feedback on this one, so be sure to hit me up with your ideas as to what I can talk about in the future as well. If you like the video, I would appreciate a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. You can follow me on Twitter and Instagram at thisdoesnotcomp. And as always, thanks for watching.